like today we are here at Robin's sewing room because she does on the quilting machine and then as a lot of you guys say you want to know a little bit about sewing um quilting machine right we'll talk a little bit about your long arm and then you can introduce us to all this area okay and do you mind to show us no go you... yeah you just have to you know if it's not perfectly <laughs> clean just remember because i'm organized brain up here and creative so you know yeah and i do love like seeing a lot of these that you decorate in your house you can see a lot of quilts here right i love seeing all these in your sewing room and then like behind here right uh-huh and yeah it's it's really nice Thanks. um let's start by showing your storage like how you storage different things and okay like can one of my this? yes this is like my <laughs> favorite my fat quarters and charm packs and i have them sorted by um like there's my moda riley blake and then um the random ones that don't really you know they're just all everybody so Anyway, so I have that there, and then these cupboards are just full of project bins, which, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot, you know, and my random, oh, this quilt's done, here, I'll put those scraps there. Oh, okay. So, you know what I mean, I try to keep my scraps together that way, but, And I like you, know. you have, like, so many different type of boxes. Just right, for different like, so, boxes. yeah, it just depends on what I need them for. Hey, look, here's my witch's hat for, you know, um which is coming up so oh. I have to keep that nice and flat and, and my bolts so wait do you wear that though like I do you... I wear it for witches okay yeah that's so. pretty cool yeah um uh, yeah let's show them your long arm and then I'll ask you we'll okay. go through the questions and then okay just see how it is so this is my long arm and I was just thinking about it I've had this for 16 years this month because my little guy was only nine months old and he's 16 almost 17 so oh wow yeah so th what i have is a handy quilter it's an hq 16 um so it has the 16 inches throat depth right here that's what that means and mine doesn't have a quilt i mean a computer um when i got mine 16 years ago they hadn't made the computer uh -huh. but now they have the computer so like i have a laser on the back so i can follow panographs like paper pantographs and um, do that, but I, the computer I don't have. Oh, so. okay. But I like to work on the front anyway. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit of custom, but not very much. I just like to, I prefer freehand. So I have a lot of the same designs on my clothes. <laughs> just that's like okay. I think practice. it's okay, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, I just need to step outside my box and venture some more. So, because usually when I do, it becomes successful and then I quilt it all the time. So, okay. There you go. Okay, so was the size something important when you were considered buying this one or like? Yeah, how did so, you? you know, I figured I was just going to do it. My mother in law really encouraged me. She's like, you could do this and do a little bit extra at home because I was a stay home mom. And it, it has paid for many Christmases. So I wanted something deep enough, you know, this way for um to do bigger quilts uh -huh. and i made sure that i can do i can do a king size it's tight but i wanted to make sure because you can get them smaller but so i wanted to make sure it was big enough to be able to do the bigger quilts like that uh -huh. so but most of mine are usually lap size or okay. wall hangs they just you know brent gives my husband gives me a hard time he says that if I see a pattern, I usually make it bigger. So my quilts get bigger and bigger. <laughs> but I think now I'm, you know, getting smaller so I can have more. Okay. So there you go. So like when you were thinking about buying this long arm, mm -hmm. um, what were some points that's going through your mind that trying to help, I guess, trying to help others decide if they want one or like which one they want? Like what were your considerations, I guess? So I wanted easy to use uh -huh. I wanted a stitch regulator because that helps you when you first get started so it doesn't matter how fast you go move your machine uh -huh. it regulates the stitch and keeps it the same size oh okay so then it looks more even but now I don't like I don't use it now because I'm pretty consistent in you know my stitch you know how fast I go or how slow I go or whatever uh -huh. but I want it you know I just user friendly like 
we constructed it ourselves and so and then i've moved it a couple times and so we were able to construct it you know and we i was really fortunate because we had um the machine quilting show that was here like we usually have some form of it or another every year and i was able to try many different machines and at the time i needed i was limited on space obviously now i'm not but um so i wanted to make sure you know and if it and it's very user friendly so mm -hmm. those were um the important things for me so when you say user friendly does it mean like how how does it mean on this machine though so user friendly for me is just like the start and stops easy the um it has a little screen here so you know what um how fast you want to go you and if you're just doing your needle up and down and um, i guess it's also not like some compli complicated complicated yeah. setting it's not like this whole big computer thing you know like i thought okay well maybe i'll upgrade and, and get a computer and then i'm like but then i would have to mark where oh. it start and stop like i can just start you know so this stuff. is like easy for if you are good at freehand yeah freehand or you know the um, following the pantograph at the back it's just got the laser on it yeah. and then you just follow that pattern it's no thinking okay so um next question if i were to buy a long arm today what would you say is the most important thing that i should think about or like i should consider so price like when i bought <laughs> this it was only mine was only nine thousand oh but they they go up and i don't know how much a handy quilter is now like what this is um but i think it's probably pretty comparable and i know other brands have you know like a mid because i think this is considered more like a mid arm instead of a long arm oh because okay. like there's some that have the bigger throat depth right here uh -huh. and so um i honestly would look up and see and go and try if you can like if there's quilt stores around that carry them that you can go and try them or if you have like some friends because i would really try it because there's a lot of people that say you know it gets a little expensive to have your quilts quilted mm -hmm. and so they're like i'm gonna buy a machine well not everybody can quilt machine quilts it you have to be able to you know like if you can get your eye um hand coordination so you can follow the pantograph mm -hmm. or freehand so i would try it out because it doesn't always like i've had a couple friends that have bought machines and then they hated the quilting of it oh. you know so i would i would really suggest if you have the chance to to try it out did you get to go to other stores or try it out yourself, yeah I guess? so there was a store um over in murray it's no longer there and we could you could try them out oh. and then i like i said i tried it out at the machine quilting show and that's how i knew that i would like it and mm -hmm. my mother-in-law was like i said was really encouraging because she's like you can you know you could make a little extra <laughs> which that's true i which, mean like if you start for yeah other people i think it's a great investment because your daughter um yeah Kenzie also do her quilting on this machine so like do you like learn from each other do you start at the same point or yeah so she she picked it up really fast in fact last year when i hurt my back and i couldn't do anything uh -huh. i step by step told her how to do it okay. and she came down here and was able to do it you know just by me instructing her to be able so that's why i say it's a really user friendly uh -huh. because then i can say okay this is how this is what you need to do you know and so yeah so she's really liked it and she only does a couple of patterns and i keep telling her you just need to like <laughs> go draw on the quilt because she's a fabulous artist uh -huh. and that's why i tell my son too because he likes to wind my bobbins and i'm like one of these days i'm gonna get you to quilt on the machine and he's like oh, i don't know about that and i'm like no like he knows how to thread the machine he knows how to do oh. yeah so he knows how to put the quilts on and so He's good yeah, at Yeah, so like, I'm like, come on, come on, just try. <laughs> so so before you bought this, mm -hmm. I personally I tried to quilt a little bit on small mm -hmm. projects on my mm -hmm. sewing machine. Have you like done that before you bought it? Yeah? Mm hmm Okay. In fact, I did I decided I was gonna surprise my husband for Christmas. Uh -huh. And I made him a king size quilt. And then I machine quilted it. And I had walking pneumonia and I was pregnant and I didn't know I was pregnant. So it was like 
miserable doing the whole big thing. Yeah. But he loves it and I love it. And I'm like, I joke all the time, I'm gonna unpick that and machine quilt it. And he's like, oh no, you're not. That like I love that quilt. Oh. And so I have like I have. It's it's a little bit harder, but it's definitely doable. Oh. Definitely. So So like did you just choose a pattern and then like do it on your sewing machine when you did that one? So I just did like meandering. So it was just an all over mm -hmm. and I sprayed the quilt, you know, just used spray glue to, um, Make it to sandwich it all together, yeah. you know, and then I just kind of rolled it up. Mm -hmm. So I had, you know, the big long and then I just shoved it through uh -huh. and I had a much smaller machine than this and it totally, it was totally doable. It took me like three days cause you know, I was sneaking and I couldn't do when he was oh. home and um, totally was able to do it and that's it was it was fun because you know I was excited and then he was excited because I made it this big quilt and it had trains on it so he loved yeah that's nice yeah I guess so that's the point you know you kind of you yeah. can quilt and you want to quilt yeah that's kind of when I knew okay I could you know totally get and it, then that was about nine months later that I got you know after when he was because it was with Noah my youngest and so Okay. That's when I that's really cool. did it. So um so okay, I guess enough of us talking. We'll show them a little bit of how um you use your machine. Okay. So two things some things I want to point out. So you always want to make sure that your back make sure your back is big enough. Uh -huh. You know, because that's what your quilter, you know, to put it on here, you need that extra space at the top to put it on and you need the extra space at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then you need this extra on both sides so that um, you can make sure your tension's good. But then that gives you room, like if, especially if your quilter has um, the computer, they want to have that extra room to be able to um, get your quilt on straight and nice and square. So I've already done that. And, I, and then I go along and stitch down the top and then make sure, you know, it's nice and... Um, I free float my quilts. You can roll them up. A lot of people will do that. But once I discovered this several years ago, I like it because I can help keep my quilt straight, make sure there's no puckers. If I see a pucker coming up mm -hmm. on someone's quilt or my own quilt, then I can kind of work it in, which that's nice too. And then um, another thing you want to make sure to do, I always go through and I iron every quilt before I start it. Uh -huh. So like make sure your quilts are ironed because then that way I can see if, cause sometimes you can easily miss a seam and you'll have a hole and um, you can fix it before, oh. but once you get it on here, it's a little bit harder to um, fix it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go ahead and on this one, I'm just gonna freehand my swirls that I, I was gonna do a pantograph, but then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, mm, you know what? I think I like this. So I just tack it down and then I need to make my speed go faster. If I had my glasses, that's always <laughs> a good thing. So you can see what you're doing. So I'll do the speed. I like to do it about 96 or 97. Oops. Oh, I guess we'll go with 98 today. So I've got it all tacked down and then I just turn. Oh, get on. Really fast. Yeah, so it's because I quilt faster than I probably should, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of people that like to stitch, you know, slower, but I just have a tendency if it's slower to go really fast, so, and you just kind of keep track where you're going, not where you've been, uh -huh. it's just how I do this. And I try to keep them random. Yeah. You know. But you can get pretty creative, you know, if you are an artist. Just whenever a uh, pattern comes to your mind. Right. There's a, yeah. Because there's a lot of, you know, all you quilters out there are very creative and can do all kinds of fun stuff. I'm kind of boring. You know? <laughs> I guess you're so 
also trying to feel comfortable, I right. guess. Right, and I I really like my um, quilting to show up after. I like my piecing uh -huh. to be the star of the show. Yeah, you know, because I mean, like this to me, this is a really cute quilt, and I don't want to take away from it. Yeah. Um, there's lots of people that could do some really cute custom, uh -huh. and um. I'm working on it. I'll get there, you know, someday, right? I'll show someday them I'll be a little more, a little more daring. <laughs> get a little more in there like to. that. So you can't really see a lot because of where because I quilted it, you know. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because it blends in. Like, it'll show up more down here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like it because, like, you can show more of your quilt instead of the quilting part. I right guess, yeah right I guess exactly. that's your purpose so you know um and it's like as far as picking out a design you know um this is kind of a wintry christmas so mm -hmm. i figured you know a, a swirl if things are more square i'd try to make a more rounded pattern i haven't i would love to be able to do like straight more straight lines and stuff is but, that is that harder than like than swirl yeah i think so it is. yeah because you have to Anyway, I've done like the ruler work and stuff and make it more straight. But like on this quilt right here where it's, it got, it has the lines. See the lines right here? Um, I actually put it on my quilting machine and I basted it. And then I did this on the big machine, both of those. Uh -huh. And then I did this on my, just my domestic sewing machine. Oh, so yes. that I could have more control and keep it uh -huh. more straight. So, I kind of forget. Do we like put this together? Yeah, we had it a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. Or a year ago, whenever. Yeah, because it went to Garden of Quilts. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, so. I kind of remember this quilt. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I have more questions. Okay. So, oh, how do you like when you have problems? How do you problem solve or like how do you figure out? Because I, I don't know about like buying a machine mm -hmm. and then have after service or like when you have questions, who do you go to or where do you go to to when you have challenges or issues? Right. So when I when I got mine, I got it at the cotton shop that was over and they had they had the repairman was there and you'd take it there and then they would service it. Uh -huh. And then like one time I had this little this little part fall came up broke off this little thing right here mm -hmm. and um they weren't going to be able to fix it for a couple weeks and there was a gal that worked there and told me buy this part and then explained to my husband how to fix it oh and my husband came home and he he fixed it for me you know so um I haven't had a lot of problems with it and had to have a lot of things um done I just try and keep it clean you know oil it and um do all the the things that make our machines happy yeah. you know and then the because of the interface is not so hard to yeah I guess so was that one of your uh, consideration as well mm -hmm. when you look at the machine you're like oh hey this is easy enough to keep yeah using. and you know it's really funny because like this doesn't scare me but I have an embroidery machine uh -huh. and I've only done it one time uh -huh. because and it was in a class because that freaks me out <laughs> But this doesn't freak me out. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Somebody just seems to be like, okay, Robin, come on. We're going to do the embroidery <laughs> machine. But it like, it totally freaks me out. But I think because it's not a computer really, mm -hmm. and it's easy for me, you know, because you just have some numbers. There. Yeah. Because me and computers are like, we are not friends. <laughs> so. I guess I will say a lot of us. Yeah. Um, so when you go that fast, mm -hmm. When you start, what was your speed, kind of? So, um, it does, it, I'm set at 98, uh -huh. and I don't know, it's just 98%, but you can, you can go down as slow as you want to go. Like, you don't have to go fast. You can set it down to 25 and then go really slow. I know when I'm doing custom, when you do custom, you go a lot slower. Because you want it to be accurate mm -hmm. and look yeah. nice. Okay. And then, you know, so. How often do you do custom? Yeah, like do um not very people? often see like this was like this is kind of custom it was a couple years ago and i 
I just went around and stayed out of this. It would have probably been more custom if I had, you know, done the straight lines. Mm -hmm. That's a little more. Um, but then, like this one, um, my cute wonky. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so I just did swirls in here. I kind of tried to copy what she had done uh -huh. on hers. And I think Sandy had done all hers on her own little domestic machine. She oh. Can, she quilts fabulously on that. I do not know that. I know, right? And then this was one I did a little custom on, but it, I have a couple others where I did do the ruler work, but this I just kind of did the flower in the center and then did the borders each differently. I mean, you can, it's cool because you just let your imagination go and yeah, just do whatever you want. It's that's really what's fun. Cool. That's, I think, probably the most rewarding about having your own machine. It's it's hard sometimes trying to figure out what to do, but because of Pinterest and books and Instagram and Facebook, like, there's so many resources yeah. to be able to come up with ideas. So, and I just try to let the quilt speak. Hey, I really want to be custom. Like, <laughs> the block of the month is singing in the rain. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to dust off it? my custom and... And do it. Okay. So, we'll see. We'll see. I'm we'll see excited. what happens. I'm excited to see, like, how you quilt it, though. Because, right. like, it's a really cool club. Thanks. Yeah. Like, you don't even want to see the stack of quilts that I have that aren't quilted. And I thought that, oh, you get the quilt done, you can, you know, get it right on the machine. No. It doesn't happen. Okay. Unless um, it's a gift. Because when it's a gift or if it's for the store, yeah. then definitely then get it done do. faster. Yeah. Um, I guess when I ask that question, I think people want to know what they should be careful of or what they should notice, what they should know before they bring their quilt to a quilter. And then you have mentioned the border and then mm -hmm. is there any other thing they should know before um, they... Just yeah. mostly making sure that your back's big enough. Kind of have an idea what you want. Like there's a lot of quilters that have books that you can look through and see the designs yeah. that they have and that they can do. Um, be careful when you do custom and you take it to the quilter. If you are worried about how much it could possibly be, give them a budget and say, I don't want to go more than this amount, you know, but be realistic knowing that if you take them a king size quilt and uh -huh. you say only spend a hundred dollars, it's that's not, not gonna possible. happen yeah. you know because if you're not careful you can end up spending six hundred dollars getting or more getting your king size quilt custom quilted because it's all based on how much quilting is done in it and how detail oriented oh. you know some of them are definitely worth it like chelsea fitzgerald hers are definitely worth it mm -hmm. you know what I mean she does amazing work I want to be like her when I grow up you know <laughs> like seriously she she does fabulous work and I I know a couple other people that you know do good um a fabulous custom but it's it definitely more on. price it's definitely more pricey because it just starts out higher you know than your all overs so when you choose a pattern that's that kind of has to do with your price as well right just depending on how dense your pattern is how mm -hmm. long it's gonna take you know the size like and um, that it just all depends okay because we do have people asking about oh how do you choose a pattern mm -hmm. and then I guess like you said the price is something they also can consider how yeah. dense they want it to yeah because how dense it is it's gonna cost more if it's more loose it's not gonna be as much okay so and like I don't know what people really want to know when they ask about um, what pattern or how you choose a pattern. But, like, personally, how do you choose a pattern? So, like, for this one, it was all about um, it's a winter quilt. Yeah. So, I wanted to do swirls or I wanted to do snowflakes. But then I thought about the fact that being snowflakes and I thought this doesn't really have a Christmas fabric in it. And it doesn't oh, yeah. really have a snow. <laughs> so, I thought... Well, I very easily, if I just did the swirls, mm -hmm. I feel like I could use it whenever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then like when I was doing the spools quilt, I wanted more, like I did the orange pill, you know, cause I wanted more, um, like a more uniformed. That is a pantograph that I did. Uh -huh. But then these others, you know, I just did, like, I don't know if you call it 
I always call them peacocks. I don't know why I call them peacocks, but they're like half C's, you know. Uh -huh. And then like more circles because this is very like it's hexagon. So I wanted something not with straight lines, oh. you know. And so I just tried to, you know. And I like this one you do on the border. Did yeah. you do this on your sewing machine or? So that one was actually a swap that I did uh -huh. and it actually came from a cute gal. Um, off of Instagram, we did a swap and it was fun oh. to get to do that. So she had done that. Okay. Isn't that fun? Yeah. But that gives you great like, ideas. Different. And so if you look at like what other people do, you know what I mean? You try to like, you can play off the fabric or you can play off the pattern. Mm -hmm. Like look up your designer on Instagram or Facebook if you have those or or their websites and kind of see what they've done and then that might spark spark some ideas okay so so yeah I guess that's just you can choose however the pattern you want right right exactly like you can also choose a pattern that has nothing to do with the theme of your quilt like absolutely because yeah. you can you know um the diagonal plaid is really cool and um that's in my opinion cute on any quilt mm. You know, and yeah. it's more, it's definitely straight lines. And so I guess that's like something that you want to do. Next. Right. I should try straight lines on here, huh? <laughs> Anna has done straight lines with a panograph. Do we have anything more we want to show? Do you have anything you want to show? Probably no. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Unless you have. Yeah. Um, just ask us any question, guys. Um, leave us a comment. I think um robin does her own quilt a lot and then so like if you have anything you want to ask her you can leave a comment and then just asking about anything quilting and then quilt machines and she can probably help you a little more than i do <laughs> so yeah. right and if not we'll find the we'll find the answer right yeah so if you have any question ask us and then Thank you. Thanks for coming to my quilting room. Yeah. Slash fun. sewing room. So. <laughs>